know when we're actually live, okay? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bridge Conversations. And uh, thank you for your patience as we were kind of working out through some technical difficulties. Um, I will tell you part of the reason why is that our, our master technological guru, the man behind the machine, the one that makes everything tick, the professor behind the curtain is actually up here on the panel with us, Mr. Greg Gaither. And so... I, I, uh, this is a man of God, and I, I want to make sure, Greg, that you are honored, right? This, this, you, get, you get the segue? You're honored because the reality is um, there are some very, very smart people here at the bridge, and yet you have found your niche here flawlessly, and you are a blessing. You're a blessing to your family, and you're a blessing to the, this family here at the bridge. And so um, I, thought, I thought it was very, uh, very telling that we have some brilliant people back there working on it, but with you not back there, suddenly there is a snag. So thank you for all that you do, my friend. So welcome, this is Bridge Conversations, and what this is, is a Q&A session. It is a, it is a ministry out of the Bridge Church here in Marysville, California, where you have an opportunity to ask questions, biblically-based questions. It can be theological, it can be life application, but all of it is grounded in the Word, and we will address them. What you can do is you can send in your questions right here through the, through the feed on Facebook, and we will read them, we'll address them, we will answer them as best as we can. Praise God. We also have a live uh, town hall here, and we've got Mr. Jesse, who is going to be running around. Jesse, I don't know why you're not having your pregnant wife run around, but that's fine. We'll, we'll take you, and we'll, we'll make sure. Uh, those of you here, uh, I would encourage you to keep this young man busy, and uh, wave your hand if you have a question, and he'll come to you and, uh, and get, get you the mic, and you can ask your question. So we do have a couple of things. We do have a base theme that we launch from. Now that we do not have to stay with this theme. We can go off this theme. We can, you can ask any question you like, but we always like to start with kind of a theme to, to launch from, if you will, and, and then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, so I have, as I mentioned, Mr. Greg Gaither that is joining us. And this is his first time, so I would like you to point the most pointed questions towards him, if you can. Praise God. And then we also have Pastor Rondo, who runs our women's ministry. And Rondo, I've, I've known you for 18 years now. I feel old, suddenly, but, uh, but <laughs> I've got a grandchild on the way, don't forget. Um, and so I do. So, uh, but it's been such a joy getting to know you and such a fun se season right now in our lives, uh, getting to minister with you. You know, it's, it's fun. It's fun. So thank you for joining us, both of you. Thank you for joining me. A um, couple of different things. One is I want to encourage you both here in the live audience as well as on the feed to jump on Facebook and share the video. It is most valued to be doing it live 
while we are doing this because you can ask questions later on and we can try to address them but it, it works better the format works better if you are tuning in live and asking questions so i want to encourage you to share this video on your on your profile on facebook those of you that have uh facebook out there and then um uh so you can send it via messenger whatever it is and we'll see if uh god just can't get it to the right folks amen also, if you are watching this live, I want to encourage you, there's a little bell icon somewhere on the screen when you are watching live, and if you click it, you are basically saying that you would like to be notified whenever we go live. So I have that on mine. I actually had to redo it because it kicked me off for some reason, um, but every time the bridge goes live, it sends me a notification. So I want to encourage you to do that so that if you ever forget that we're going live or on Sunday, that it will send you a little a little ping. Praise God. I think that we have everything. So here we go. Again, you're welcome to start sending in questions at any time. We do have a couple of questions that we're going to launch into. Now, the theme that we're launching from is honor. We've been going through the Christian fundamentals, and we've actually gone several weeks in. We had Pastor Jeff Johns here a few weeks back, a few months back, and uh, and we hit some topics within the fundamentals there. This one is honor. And it's very interesting. I feel like, and we kind of talked about this a little bit, it feels sometimes like we associate honor with submission or honor with obeying. And it isn't always that way, right? And so I was wondering if you guys could maybe share your thoughts on um, the difference between honoring someone and, sub and submitting to them or to obeying them. Do you see what I'm getting at? Because it, here in the church, I've been in the church a long time, and it always seems like they say, well, you need to honor your authorities and uh, uh, o obey, 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 and they, they're used interchange, and I don't necessarily believe that's, that's correct. So I wanted to get maybe your guys' thoughts as we start off, what you feel the difference is between honoring and submitting. Does that make sense? Either of you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. If you want. <laughs> so, so from what I can understand in in uh, uh, submission to authority and and uh, honoring something, so I believe the word of God, and the word of God says that my my authorities have so been placed over me. So if my authorities have been placed over me, my ability to honor God is to submit to the authorities that he has placed over me. So if I'm going to um, respond to something or, or do something, I should uh, first have reverence for God who has put the thing over me in the first place. And so if I'm attempting to honor God, I would submit to the authority that he has placed um, my my pastor, uh, uh, the authorities as far as police, those kind of things, I, I'm their place there by God, and and so in order to honor Him or to have reverence for Him, to esteem Him, um, I'm going to submit to the authorities and not just act out of my own will and what I want to do whenever I want to do it, but to check with Him, to uh, acknowledge Him, and then. Um, uh, decide what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. So that that's that's the the difference for me um, thinking that is that I, it, submitting to my authorities is actually in a, a, a an avenue to to honor God. So uh, that's that's what I got. Praise God. Rhonda, do you have any thoughts? Um well, we we grow up submitting. We grow up learning how to submit as kids. Um, in the workplace, um, and the Bible tells us that, you know, submitting one to, to another is what we should be doing, um, but I think that the difference between uh, submitting, which is just kind of yielding your will um, and allowing somebody else to, um, you know, speak into your life or, you know, following directions. Maybe they're wiser. Maybe it's their business. Maybe they know a whole lot of things that you don't know. So um, following directions is part of submitting. Um, but I think it changes when we realize kind of what the definition of honor is because 
um, what I read about honor is that it's to place high value, worth, and importance on other people by viewing them as priceless gifts and granting them a position in our lives worthy of great respect. So honor is really a gift that we give to others, and we all are deserving of it. And it's our job um, as Christians or, or not to just really realize that everybody, there's great value placed on each and every life. So, um, so submitting might be acting and doing something, not really realizing the value that those people play, the part that they play in so many different areas. But when you, when you do realize that each person is a gift from God and are special and a treasure, then to honor them means something different. It's not about obeying anymore. Um, it's about applying worth. It's about um, encouraging them in who they are. And it's about um, helping lift other people up. Um, and it's, it's about... Um, you know, just being that, that disciple, it, it, we're a disciple, and, um, and that's part of what we should do is honor, honor those who are over us and honor each other because we're all the same when it comes down to it, so. Amen, and really good stuff. I, I was thinking about the fact that um, you can, I think that everybody has dealt with abuse of authority in their life whether it's in the church, at the workplace, even within the government level, whatever it is, uh, growing up and, and parents, almost everybody has dealt with, uh, with uh, abuse of authority. And I think that a difference is you can not obey a, an authority when they are um, commanding, in essence, biblical disobedience, but still honor them. Because the word says that we honor all authority because all authority is placed under God. But you, you've seen multiple times throughout the word where he has placed absolutely ungodly kings, ungodly rulers. So you can still, um, this is, and I'm maybe, I'm, what am I getting your thoughts on this? You can still honor authority that is ungodly and not in the right place. Um, without necessarily obeying them because what they're instructing is taking you the wrong path. Am I, am I phrasing this correctly? Do you understand what, I'm, what I mean by this thought? Okay. Go ahead. So, so when it comes to um, things that are, are not necessarily uh, following God or, or, or authorities placed over you that aren't doing those things i think it's i think uh the first thing to do there is not to take your eyes off of the lord so in in that if um we were going through you know this pandemic i mean all of us went through it and there was uh things and orders and things to do and when it came to it uh, it wasn't about it didn't need to be, oh, I need to get my opinion out there, or I need to just speak and, and tell one group of people or that group of people that I'm right or wrong, but not to take my eyes off the Lord and to, to really understand that um, what I need to do was to honor, uh, uh, or, but submit to that, honor God by submitting to the authorities as best I can when it came to, um, you know, what, what, doesn't compromise my my values in God. And when it came to uh, what I could do was to encourage others. What I could do was to follow God, to to know His Word, and to to uh, honor Him by that. And not just to just because somebody is a bad authority or hard thing, you don't need to bad mouth. You don't need to run your mouth or spread division or spread things like that. I think um, I, I had some um, struggles in my own life here uh, recently and having an, an authority that was difficult to to deal with. And there was ways that I wanted to deal with it, ways that I wanted to, to do things 
outside of what the word of God said. However, that wasn't an option because I needed to honor God with everything that I do, with my actions, with my, with, with revering his word and listening to it. And so in order to do that, I had to take what Greg thought was uh, uh, acceptable or what he would have chosen to do and instead uh, uh, refer to God, see what God thinks about that and obey it and follow it and lo- and realize that he is his ways are above my ways his his ideas are above what I what what I bring to the table and so when I struggle or need something like that I need to honor him and and how do I do I don't honor him by bad mouthing uh, the authorities that have either failed in my life or not but to do the best that I can without compromising uh, uh, the fear of the Lord and, and staying under what he says uh, without shoving myself forward and without putting my opinions as if they were the things, but God's opinions and what he says, putting that first. So, so oh, did you want to say add something? Okay. So I wanted to say real quick, Greg, um, I'm going to jump onto another question because something you said is, is really, really, was really good regarding uh, one that Jordan Azevedo sent him where he put, uh, what are practical ways to honor each other? And I love the practicality of the word of God. I really do. It's, it's, It's incredible how supernatural it is that God put together this group of writings from people thousands of years ago from all walks of life in a completely different culture. And it is in, is impactful and relevant today who, who we are as it was then. It's incredible, right? Um, but one of the things you said in there was not to badmouth leadership and authority when they are not right. And I think that that's very, very difficult to do. Um, in the workplace, I think it's very so easy to do have the, the water cooler situations where everybody is sitting around and talking, talking, yapping, yapping. We had a we had a pastor that said once, um, "Don't go home and have fried pastor when you uh, after, after church, right? Let just go home and roast the pastor because he didn't shake your hands or whatever it is." There is something inside of us that likes to gravitate towards the negative and then share our misery with other people. And I don't know why that is. There's something nasty inside of our flesh that wants to share misery and it, and it oozes and permeates. So one of the things Jordan said was, what are some ways, and Katie, I'll get to your question as well, but, but he said, uh, what are some practical ways to honor each other? I think that's one of them, is to, is to intentionally not verbally badmouth anyone in authority but also using that as an opportunity to check our heart as well, right? So what are some other practical ways? Because if you look in the word, honor, I was looking this up, honor is mentioned 355 times in the word between the Old and New Testament. Honor, honor your parents where it was, was the most of them. There's honor God, there's honor, 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 there's so much. Talking about honor the elders in your church, honor elderly in your church, elder wives, right? And so... Uh, it isn't always just, in fact, I was looking at Romans 12 too, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. That isn't even dealing with authority. So what are some practical ways within the church, within our work environment, that we can actively be honoring people? And like I said, that one not bad-mouthing authority, I think is a great one. What are some others you can think of? Um, well, just my thought on honoring those that have maybe you know, an abuse, abuse over you or something is that, um, I've just found in the past that what's helpful is to pray for those people because that kind of gets your heart out of, um, wanting to do something else or just having those bad attitudes and stuff because the Bible tells us we're supposed to pray for those who, you know, spitefully use, abuse, all those kinds of things that, that will change your heart posture. Um, but, some practical ways that we can um, honor each other is in word, deed, and actions. Um, we, if we, if we consider people are priceless treasures, then we need to f- look for the positive in them and share that with them. Um, I had, if there's an attribute or something that you admire about somewhat someone or something they do well, make sure that you tell them. Um, about that and 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 also I've noticed for women too maybe we'll see something that we admire 
in another woman. And um, that is an opportunity for us to build up and encourage and apply value to that person. But sometimes we'll look at somebody and we'll see that thing that we admire and immediately we'll go into a comparison. And it's like the enemy took the opportunity to sh apply honor and value and worth to someone's life and he turned it inward and caused us to start feeling either better than or less than or look at all of the things that we're not. So one way is to, if you notice somebody doing something um, and that cat, then, then go tell them. Let them know what, how valuable they are in your life. Let them know um, the things that they do that are special and amazing because we all need to know that because some people don't believe what God's word says about them. And sometimes we have to help them along. Um, I came from a place where I was kind of spiritually bankrupt in my life just from my history and my past. And I didn't believe good things about myself. And when I started coming to church, um, my life was transformed not only by the love of Christ, but by the love of my brothers and sisters around me that when I didn't believe in myself, they built me up and encouraged me and supported me in such a way um, until I could start believing those things for myself. So we have an opportunity in honoring one another that can really bring some transformation and direct people to their true identity in Christ. So when, with questions like this, it's like um, I, I try to refer as much to, to the Word of God as I can now that, now that I know that I have an entire book um, um, that is true, that there is no error in, that I can walk with, that, I can, that can help lead me. Something that Jesus says in, in, in Matthew 19, uh, 18, um, he says, You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Uh, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that love your neighbor as yourself is a great practical way to honor each other. What, what, what you're going to do is when you, when you it, it says love your neighbor as yourself. So when you go to a restaurant, you order what you want to eat and when you get in the car you turn on the air on your ac to what you feel comfortable when you uh, watch a movie you pick the movie you want to watch you 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 listen to the music you want you do the things that you want now if if i'm going to honor uh, my neighbor as myself i'm going to do what you i'm going i'm going to honor you by turning the ac to the level you want i'm going to honor you by by and 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 another thing is that i'm going to i'm i'm going to pay attention uh to you so i'm going to look when you're talking to me i'm going to listen sometimes a lot of times um i can be i can be very long-winded and i can talk a lot and one of those one of those ways that I can I can stop and 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 listen to somebody else and to give them my full attention and to really value what somebody else is saying in, in honoring each other. Um, what I gotta I gotta give a shout out to somebody. Um, I I can't like I said I can be long winded, but I was speaking about something that the Lord had had given me, and I was at the church with uh, Trent and Trent. He we we were busy. And he stopped and he turned to me and he waited and he looked at me and he gave me his attention. Now, he didn't say he automatically agreed, um, but he, he just, he stopped. He looked me in my face. He took the time that it takes to, to, to really show me um, love and honor. He, 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 he didn't make it about him. And so that, that's what we can do. We can listen to the word of God and we can love our neighbor as ourselves and, 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 we can prefer them the way that we prefer ourselves most of the time. So, yeah. I just had one more quick thought. Um, I was thinking about that one special day out of the year, your birthday. And um, what do we do? We usually give cards. I don't know, do you young people still give cards? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
But if you think about what is inside of a birthday card, it's just like saying all the nicest things that, and when you buy a card, you're thinking about the person you're buying it for and the wording fits because it's all about encouraging and giving value and worth and describing those attributes that, um, you know, are, are most like that person. So, um, I don't know. And a birthday is an honoring day. A card is to honor that person. Um, and so, I don't know, honoring. If everything you read in a, in, a, in a birthday card is showing honor to that person. So, maybe we should be like that to each other, too, That's really on good. other days. It's always been interesting to me that there are, there are times where we lay out the most honor for someone when they've died. If you think about it, you go to a funeral and you will sit there and you will see people come up over and over and get up on a microphone and talk about how amazing this person is, how they impacted their lives, all these different things. And I remember one time hearing all that thinking, wouldn't that be amazing to hear those things yourself, right? Um, words of edification. I was pointed out to me once that as a parent, oftentimes if a child does something good, then we give light kudos. If they do something bad, then we ramp it up and we hammer that thing really hard and that maybe we would be better parenting if we flip those a little bit more and went over the top with encouragement and edification when they do things right and they have a right attitude and they and and they and they have successes in their life maybe be a little more emphatic right um so that's really good and and um and i 100 percent agree agree greg on listening um i know that colleen and i that was a challenge of ours is we we're both talkers and interrupting and jumping in and sitting there getting formulating the thoughts of what we're wanting to say hurry up and finish your thoughts so that i can get the more important stuff out right like and we we had to power through that a little bit and it was not honoring and we've had to work on that learning how to to listen more i had something to share um uh, even honoring people that don't believe like you or think like you um or have the same religious beliefs. Um, sometimes it's more important to develop a relationship um, rather than wanting to challenge every point or feeling or idea that they have because in your mind, biblically speaking, that it's incorrect, they're incorrect, or they're not, or biblically, they're incorrect. Um, but you really have to um, think about the fact that and prefer them in that I have relationships with a lot of people that I don't agree with on many levels, but I still have a good relationship with them because I don't feel like just because I know the answer that I have to tell them that this is the way it should be or what you should be doing or how you should be thinking or acting. Like, let them be who they are, have their thoughts, have their ideas, because it's more important to just build relationship and develop trust over time and then when God opens the door for opportunity to, to speak in, into their lives, that's really Holy Spirit and not just me trying to say stuff that I know because that doesn't build anything. It just presses them down if I'm correcting them in whatever it is. So sometimes I think just listening and, enjoy, and, and just valuing that person for who they are, right, wrong, whatever, it doesn't matter. I can still love somebody and not agree with them, not really like them or anything, but we can still have a, a relationship and, um, and honor one another. Um, and if the Lord opens the door for conversation that is going to add some eternal value to them, then he will let me know. Yeah. Did you add more? I had just a, yeah, just maybe a question into like, how to show this would be, um, and I'm going to refer back to the word, but uh, what are you giving people? Like it, it, his, uh, Jesus says, give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. What are you giving people? Are you giving people honor? Are you giving them but, you know, if you give people, if, if you give people lies, that's what you're going to, to, to 
get. That's, that's the measure that you're going to get, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So instead of giving things that aren't, aren't honoring, give people honor. Especially in this time, give. Be, be generous. Those, those qualities, they're of God, and they're, they're, they're what we should be giving others so that we have those things that are, that are measured to us, that are pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So if we put honor in that place, you can put whatever. That, that verse that he's talking about, he's not necessarily talking about money or something like that, but just in what you're giving unto each other. You know, if, if I'm going to give um, Pastor Rhonda here something, I'm not, why would I hand her just a ball of criticism to, to the couple of things that I've pointed out or I've, that I can point out as opposed to honoring the things that the wisdom that she, that she's providing and the thing honoring her. And that, that is, I have, we all have an opportunity to, to give and to, and to do something. And what are we going to give? What are we going to choose to give because we we have to, we're faced with choices day in and day out and I'm gonna choose to honor honor God by honoring you and God has placed you and everybody here we're all placed here together for a reason and and that that is something I want to honor I I've been given a treasure in you guys the Christ has been given as a treasure for me he's my treasure and I'm going to treasure the things that he's given and and that's all of you and in this walk and and you and and Bree over there on the camera and just everybody in this family and so you know, I'm, I'm going to choose to give honor when, if he's telling me, um, to give and it will be given to you. Okay. That I believe him. He's telling the truth. I'm going to give honor. Amen. That was good stuff. You, you, you almost sound like you believe it, Greg. Praise God. So, uh, before we got, um, we got some questions on here and before I check to see if we have any questions on here, one thing I forgot to do was for those of you both here, as well as on the live feed, um, if you would like to submit a question, but you want to make it anonymous, you don't want the whole world to know who's asking this, and there's a place for that, I'm going to give you my cell phone number, and you are welcome to text it in to me. You can text me a question, and I will address the question on here, and we will keep who is coming from anonymous. So write this down. My cell phone number is right here is 530-218-6228. Do not submit your question at 3 in the morning. I won't answer it. But if you submit a question here, and now while we're here, it's 530-218-6228. Don't be shy. Pretty much every time we do this, I get text questions. So uh, so you're welcome to do that anonymously. Is there anyone out here um, that we have a, a question here in the live before I get to the feed? All right. Wait, make sure you wave at, at Jesse if you want. Okay. We got one. And Katie, I'll get to yours in a second here. Um, I'm just curious, uh, what, uh, what is something that we see in scripture, uh, that happens when we so honor or potentially maybe dishonor? What hap what does scripture say happens when we so honor or dishonor? Yes. Okay. Well, so one of them, and I'll, I'll jump in real quickly is just straight up literally in Exodus where it says, children honor your mother and father and is actually the only one with a promise or the first one with a promise that says and then you will live a long healthy life right um, and one of the things I firmly believe is that there are spiritual truths that are lift out pra lived out practically so when you have when you are raised with a sense of honor towards your parents and here's the thing not all parents are good right there are some sucky parents, and there have been times where I like, I don't know how my kids are ending where they are. It feels like I've done everything possible to screw them up, and they're still okay, right? And so um, honoring your parents it is not dependent on whether they're good parents, right? It isn't a honor your parents if they're doing great job. It's on your parents, period. And then if, as you live that principle out, the natural fruit that comes of that is a longer, healthier life. And there's spiritual and practical applications to that, okay? Um, 
Now, dishonor. So, with thoughts, though, I, I, I led it off here. What are your guys' thoughts? What, on, in the, what does the word say regarding the fruits of when you honor or when you dishonor someone? Okay, so, so in, I'm going to just always continue to refer to the word of God because that's, that's where he, he teaches and he teaches and he teaches. So something that, something that I uh, have, have recently been reading about in, in Genesis is, is Noah. And something that, uh, that the Lord gave to me was, was an explanation of honor and then also um, uh, of dishonor. And, and I was trying to see what he was giving it to me for. And then, you know, Thad was like, hey, you should be on Bridge Conversations. And the topic is honor. And I was like, of course it is. That's, yeah, I mean, it, what else would it be? But one of the things that I had w noticed with it was that there is a part where uh, Noah, it says, when Noah awoke from his wine, he knew what, his, um, what had happened with his younger son. And he said, and so one of his sons' name is Ham, and he had three sons, and Ham had uh, done something, and, uh, and as we go through the word, um, his other two uh, uh, sons, they, they honored him, and they, they covered him, and, 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 and literally covered their father where Ham didn't, and, and he did something dishonorable. And the Lord was showing me that when, when Noah wakes up, he says, cursed be and he doesn't curse Ham. He says, cursed be Canaan. And Canaan is Ham's son. So Noah, Ham, and his other sons, and then, and then Canaan is Ham's son. And so he was showing me this, and I was like, well, right away when reading, I said, Lord, that, that's not fair. Uh, uh, cursed be Ham should be the words. Noah's the one who was drinking. And, and also, I know he did dishonor, but overall, just it should be cursed be him. And the Lord showed me that it wasn't, when we sow in dishonor, when we do things that are dishonorable, we might, you might be thinking like, oh, I'm, all I need to do is be quiet and I can get away with this thing. All I need to do is just not say anything and, it, and it'll go away. No, dishonor comes out in what you produce. It, it's, a, it's a curse that will come out in your children. If you are sowing in dishonor right now, it will come out in your children. It will come out in what you produce, your work, what, what you what you what you sow. And if you're going to sow that, that's what you're going to reap. And if you follow it a few more chapters, all of a sudden the descendants of Ham are building the Tower of Babel. And that now they find themselves entirely opposing the will of God in that God had told them to spread and fill the whole earth. And they were building a tower and telling themselves, well, let's do this lest we do the very thing God told us to do in the first place. And so if you're going to sow in dishonor, you, you are going to reap that same dishonor and you're going to find yourself opposed to God. And I don't know about you guys, but that is the last place any of us want to find ourselves where in the same way, if we're going to sow in honor, we're going to reap that same thing. And what we're going to gain if, we're, if we sow in honor, we are going to gain humility. We are going to gain qualities of Christ. And we're going to gain, we'll be, we'll be exalted by Christ for our humility and for sowing honor. Uh, th this whole life, this whole thing, it's about Christ. And so uh, uh, what we sow is is what we're going to reap, and and it, also in Genesis it, he says, um, uh, uh, I think the Lord puts that there is there's always going to be uh, seed time and harvest. There's always going to be this opportunity to sow. So what are you sowing? What are you whatever you're going to sow? It's what you're going to reap, and that won't that won't pass away until the earth passes away. So as long as you're breathing, what you sow, you will reap. So w when it comes to it, make make your choice. I'm going to sow. Um, honor, not dishonor, because my children are going to serve the Lord, and their grandchildren are going to serve the Lord, and on and on and on, because that's what we sow in, in my household. Amen. Amen. That'll be hard to top, Whoa. but I totally agree with the the reaping and the sowing. Um, and the but the Bible talks about God says, "If you honor me, I will honor you," um, and. It takes uh, humility sometimes to just be that. Um, and Proverbs, um, 
15:33 it says fear the lord um the fear of the lord teaches us wisdom and humility comes before honor uh in first peter 5 um 5 through 11 well it says, uh, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Um, and so, uh, you know, I want to be on that side of the fence, trust me. But um, that's all. I, I had seen it is interesting because as far as when you sow dishonor, there was a situation at a, a work environment situation where there was a promotion available and i had seen a couple of people that actually had seniority seniority over me pursue this role and these individuals have ne had never gone up the ladder as much as they wanted to as much as they qualified for it. the reason being is they had a common practice of bad mouthing the leadership above them and one of them actually in the interview actually said well what if i if i get this position then i'll stop bad mouthing them and right and and that just seemed like a like like that made sense to them but the problem is they were showing dishonor and it was obvious to their leadership their authority and so the the natural consequence of dishonoring is they were not getting to where they wanted to go you know there are now absolutely you reap what you sow is natural consequences okay so i'm going to get on here real quick um katie your your question that was on there you said we are human beings and naturally we may not agree on all things. How do you honor one another if you may not be on the same page? So my wife and I never disagree. So I really can't uh, relate to this. No, um, that is a wonderful question that I think is the, one of the great challenges in any marriage is when we, we're not on the same page how do you move forward in an honorable way? How do you honor that person? And not just within the marriage. You can do so in, in uh, so I've said this before, I've never served in a church ever where I am 100% in agreement with everything the pastor does. You, you, you can't do that. You, uh, otherwise, if you go into it assuming that, okay, this is the pastor, and then all of a sudden you get spun out if the pastor does something different, and then you and then then you can get all worked up in your heart and people get burnt out uh, get upset at pastors so how do you move forward in a relationship and do it in an honorable way when you are uh, not on the same page and i think like i said parenting parenting is a big one uh, again you know when you're with your spouse and you're trying to figure out how to parent it with thoughts well, how, how do you how can you honor when you're not on the same page with someone else Well, um, I just am thinking of an instance when um, my husband at the time, we had a really big disagreement um, in the living room. And I, um, I was really angry at the conversation we were having. So we were not on the same page, I guess. Maybe this is <laughs> going to be um, answer that question a little bit. But um, so I storm off in the kitchen after being feeling just totally like assaulted verbally and all these kinds of things, I take off in the kitchen and in my mind, I'm really just kind of re I went into the kitchen to kind of reload my weapon and go back in the living room and let him have it. This is not literal, of course. Um, but while I was standing in the kitchen, angry, thinking of all these things, I'm going to go back and say to hurt him. He hurt me. So I'm going to hurt him. That's real godly. Right. And I'm standing there and I remember something that my pastor said, and he said, sometimes you have to bite your tongue till the blood comes out. And um, that thought just crossed my head or my, my mind. And so I just all of a sudden just like that just clicked a switch in me. And so I made him a glass of iced tea and I took it in the living room. And I said, here you go. Here's some tea. And he looked at it and he looked at me and he's looked inside the cup and then and then I just walked away, and um, that completely diffused everything, you know, because I chose to honor instead of satisfy my flesh and attack back, you know, and fight back. Um, but, you know, honor really doesn't have anything to do with whether you agree on something or not. It really doesn't, because it has nothing to do with the value that's placed on that person. 
um, the value that they hold in your life. And just because you don't agree on um, something doesn't mean that you can't still show honor, give honor, give that gift of honor. Um, sometimes you just need to table things for another day, you know, and you don't have to agree on everything to still have a relationship, live under the same household, whatever it is, you know, so. So I, my household as well, uh, I, I rarely uh, uh, disagree with, with my wife, but on the f far and few occasion that we do, uh, the, uh, the best way to understand is that for me, uh, in making sure that I honor her is something that it, it's, it's, it's pausing. It's, it's, it's slowing down and it's not, uh, it, it can be this, this human experience can be something where we consider ourselves to be right a lot. And we think we know, and we're supposed to do this. But if we look in the word of God, uh, you can find that when, when, when God made, he looked at us being um, us men and, and, and Adam and, and said, this is good and this is good and that's good, but you alone, that's not good. And, and I'll paraphrase it so I don't read you the whole word, but he says that's not good. And then he has Adam do this thing where he looks for a companion suitable to him and he goes through all these things and goes, none of this is good. And then God knows that and puts him to sleep, takes his rib. That's it, it, it's something to consider. Your wife is your rib. It's something. And, and then a profound thing he had put, he, 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 it's written in the word. Uh, he, it says, and the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. You have to remember this person that you're married, the, the word of God says that he's put you together. I'm going to honor him. I'm not going to shout down the thing that he has given to me to go through this life. This is a person to remember what he's given her to me for. And if I, I could, he clearly has placed her in my life because it's not good for me to be alone. I do not have all of the answers right away. I'm to work with her as my helper. Now, helper doesn't mean sidekick. It means my person to go through this life to serve God with. Uh, and and as we as we keep going, what is what does Adam do when 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 she's brought to him? But says, then the man said, at last, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. He rejoices. That thing was given to me by God, and I will, I will honor her because I will honor him. This was, it's not on, when you're joined together by God, it's not on purpose, it, or it's not not on purpose. It's on purpose. You're, you're to be uh, formed together together. And that's put together by God. If you believe that, let no man separate you. So I'm not going to, I'm going to honor her. I'm going to honor the Lord. And I'm going to, to realize that maybe I don't have all the answers right away. I'm going to consider what she's saying. I'm going to uh, uh, maybe, just maybe consider that I don't have all the answers and that I that maybe she's bringing something together. And just to pause on anger and to really look at the qualities of God, he is slow to, to anger. He is merciful. And so when I'm having conversations with her, I do well to remember to be slow to anger. There's a place for anger, but it's not in, in, in that area. So, and especially dealing with your children, because if you, if you have kids, you all know your children are not, they're not ready to run to honor you in every situation. If you have kids, you know, there's plenty of moments that they do not choose to honor you. And do you, if you choose to just smash them down, you're choosing not to teach them how to honor and how to honor. The, if I'm yelling at my wife, I am certainly teaching them to do the same. And so if I want to see the change in my children, the things that I want to be, I have to, I have to imitate Christ so that they imitate me. And it, how, how will they know if I don't imitate God or imitate Jesus Christ, who, who 
is my example, how will they know how to do that? How will my son know how to teach or how to treat his wife if he sees me dishonoring mine? So, so the, keeping God's word in my mind, that's, that's how, and no other, because there's nothing that I do. It's all him and what he said, and he's here to give you conversation. Turn to your word. If you don't know what to do, over and over throughout my weeks, I don't know what to do. I go to his word because he, he knew I would not know what to do, and he's shown me clearly what to do, so... I, um, go ahead. Can I just say one thing? Um, it's okay if you don't agree. You know, have you heard the, the phrase, agree to disagree? Like, it's just okay. Just realize that person's coming from a different perspective. Like, their makeup is different, their ideas, their thoughts. It's all right. It's not a big deal. Just love them anyway, you know? So it's okay. It's okay not to agree. You don't want everybody to be just like you. Ronnie, you kind of really keyed in on something that honor is um, is a heart condition. It's a heart posture. There's a scripture in here in Isaiah 29, 13. It says, the Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. And so what he's describing is people who are going out walking out this exercise of honor, exercise of worship, exercise of, of doing and saying all the right things, but he's saying their heart posture is still wrong. And I think that now, um, that question wasn't necessarily specifically pointing towards married couples, but I think that, that a, a marriage um, probably is like the great testing ground. You're, 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 you're stuck with this person and they're two different people and you kind of have to work through this stuff because you literally are with each other all the time, right? So you have to power through this stuff. And I think that sometimes, I've heard this phrase once, that sometimes we don't want to get it right, we just want to be right. And, and we, we, what we, what, I don't know if you, about you guys, but I have caught, found myself in disagreements where I've realized I'm wrong, but I'm stubborn and stick to my guns and keep on pushing through because I don't want to yield to the fact that I'm wrong. So I'll start creating these reasons to push my point across. And one of the things that I, that I do with Colleen and I is um, I quickly will look at uh, whatever it is that we are in disagreement with and one, I make sure that how we are disagreeing is, is I'm still valuing the relationship over whatever it is that we're arguing over. Because there is a right and a wrong way of disagreeing with someone. And you can disagree with someone and create harm in the long term with the relationship. And, uh, and even if you come to an agreement with this circumstance, right? You can harm the other person, you can harm the relationship. And so how you argue, or how you disagree, I think is more important than what you're disagreeing over. Because the relationship needs to be stronger in the process. Um, uh, and then I will also look at the subject matter of what we're disagreeing with, and I, and I genuinely do this in my mind. I ask myself, is it more important to me that this happens then it is for her that is done this way. In other words, any given thing, whether it is, I don't know, load, how to load the dishwasher or fold the towels or how we're, how we're dealing with something with the kids, I, I try to, in my mind, I think, is it more important that, I, that it's done this way or do I think that it is more important for her that it's done this way? And if, I'm, if it really isn't that important to me, then I just, I, I just brush it off. It's just not worth creating tension I'm not saying you always cave in, but you have to put the, the relationship over whatever it is that's, that you're in disagreement with. And I genuinely believe you're right, Greg. Your children see it. Your children, and not only that, but I genuinely believe that your children can pick up on the little nuances of what's in your heart in the midst of a disagreement. My children have absolutely seen Colleen and I disagree on things. They've seen us fight over things. They've also seen us come through it on the other side. They've seen us heal. They've seen us move forward on that, right? And uh, unfortunately, they've probably seen some ugliness, and then they've also seen some very healthy ways of working through stuff. Um, but I think that you have to put the relationship uh, of, of, of whoever it is. It's not just a marriage. Oh, whoever it is. It can, can be a pastor. It can be a co-leader within the church. I mean, we, you can disagree with someone literally that if you're, you're serving in the church and you're disagreeing with someone 
I've, I've seen it right in the middle of church services before. I think you can't, you can't serve in the church for very long without at one point have disagreements with how things should be done, even with other people, right? And there's healthy ways of moving through those disagreements and doing it in an honoring way. Praise God. Go ahead. What was the exact question, though? That you well, the, just, the, the just question was, yeah, how do you honor one another if you may not be on the same page? And we oh, see that most often in marriages, so. but it's not just marriages. Well, yeah, especially if you're if you're if you're not on if you're not on the same page. To wow, praise the Lord! I really went into that that time. That was that that was it. There, you, when you when you are. Uh, when you are at odds, the, the best thing is to, to, well, for me, I notice is to pause, is to, it's not just to hammer through, and it's, it maybe stop, ask the Lord, like, slow down, patience, and that, that can be really hard, especially if you, we have to come to the grips that maybe we don't have it, and that maybe we could be uh, wrong, and, and then also, examine our own our own thinking and where we're at the, um the it, it, if if and to show in unity like because the ourselves that we're on each other's same side we just don't agree with the c current subject matter and there's many ways to do that in just the way that you move with your wife and as you go out and around and you know this culture now you we go out and we see uh, people are very um as we go out i i've been to the movies here uh recently and when you go out people where are your eyes where's where's your heart where are you where are you at the the I'm going to read scripture, okay? Um, there's, there's a particular part, Matthew 5, he says, now I know it sounds extreme, but we'll just get through it. You have heard that it, it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So when you're out with her, who are you looking at? Are you looking, look at your wife, look, have that bit of like, we are in unity. Even when you're out somewhere, look at her. Don't be looking around. Keep to show her that she's, that you're one with her at all the other times, because you will come to the moment that you disagree. You will come to the moment where you don't have it. But when you know that that other person honors you in every other aspect, and that in this case, maybe she can grasp that okay, he, there's a reason he's sticking to this thing because it, when we're together, it's right. And he's always putting me first and, and, or not, not, not before God, but, but first in the sense of like in the public, you're looking at her where, where it, you're, it's clear here what he's saying, where your eyes go there, there your heart is. And, and, and keep that, be, be keep that in all of your aspects so that when you do come to this parting of ways or, 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 or parting of agreement on something that you're that you can at least see okay well that person loves me they they consider me so let's you know take uh really spell it out and then ultimately the word of god go with uh, many times you're going to come especially in a marriage you're going to come to uh, especially in a marriage you're going to come to a the the point like okay well we clearly don't agree we have big disagreement here Let's go to the Word of God, because every person of God should be ready to lay down their own beliefs according to, let, let's, let's, let's do what the Lord says. Let's, let's revere Him, put Him first, and if I have a differing opinion than what He says, who wins here? Who do I put? Does, if, if we put the Word of God and the man of God there, God will choose the Word of God every time, because the Word of God is truth. So at that point, you make sure you're aligned with it. And whoever it is, get ready to just submit to the Word of God. And at that point, I think if you're submitting to the Word of God, she's going to be, and I'm speaking from a male perspective, uh, but she's going to be ready to submit to you because she sees you submitted to Him. And at that point, you're not, she's no longer arguing, you're arg it's here. But if your opinion is not His, maybe you, you, well, not maybe, you need to change it to His, so... We're getting near the end, so we're going to uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and address what you thought of. I, I was just going to say that um, sometimes disagreements can be very beneficial because sometimes it brings out um, understanding that maybe you weren't um, identifying to begin with. Like maybe 
it was your pride that was really kind of offended or assaulted because of whatever the disagreement topic is. But sometimes, I mean, fight, there's a good way to have fights. You can have your own op opinions and then you can listen to that person where they're coming from and why and even repeat those you know how you're understanding it back to them and make sure that you're getting the full understanding about what they're saying and sometimes that just brings things to light because maybe the dis disagreement had to do with um, something in my flesh or something in my um, that that had been a wound from the past or something so maybe it maybe it wasn't even intentionally directed to hurt me but I took it as offense you know so uh, dialoguing back and forth about really what you mean and what you're thinking and what you're really saying and repeating that back is sometimes a benefit to kind of bringing understanding yeah see even just simply misunderstanding them because the wordage is a little bit different and you were thinking one thing absolutely yeah okay praise God so we're going to see if we can address one or two more before we got a late start so we're going to start and just a little bit late um, but we had one that came in um, Anthony put, what are the best ways to distinguish between honor and submission? And, uh, and I'll tell you my initial thoughts. I very much feel like honor, and I mentioned before, is more of a heart posture. Um, it is a position, the a New Testament, a word that we usually use, that usually is translated as honor, means reverence or personal value. You are, you, are, you are seeing personal value in the other person. And it isn't always authority figure. Um, the word of God, I mean, we talked about this when Paul was writing about a wife submit to your husbands, literally within two verses, he says, submit one to another in reverence, right? In honor and reverence. And so uh, submitting to each, I, I believe that honor has to do with a heart posture that produces a level of submission to each other. And whether it's submission to authority or literally just yielding to the other person, as I mentioned before, when it isn't, this isn't all that important to me. This, I don't need to make this a hill to die on. I don't have to stick to my guns and, and pound the table, especially if I have authority. And this is a hard one. If you actually have the authority, you can actually still submit to other people in an honorable way because you don't need to flex it. You know, the word meekness is, is power under control, is to be able to have a high level of power, but you don't feel the need to exercise it. And so even when you're in a position of authority, you can actually submit to others in an honorable fashion. You don't have to be the one that is being submitted to, if that makes sense. Um, but that's how I, I felt the difference between honoring and submission. You guys thoughts? It's, it's kind of back to the preferring one another. Um, I like how you describe that. We don't have to flex our, you know, whatever. And it really is a heart posture because if I'm secure in who I am and, and all those things, let somebody have their way. Who cares? I, it's just not that big of a deal. If I feel super strongly about something, I might have something to say or to add to whatever, but submission and um, honoring, they're kind of two separate things. Um, so, you know, we should be submitting to one another. What, is that, what does that look like? Um, just not getting your way and letting somebody else have their way, you know? I don't need to have my way all the time. You know, if you have your way all the time, you're selfish. So, you know, honor, prefer one another, you know. Yeah, let somebody, push somebody else up and you just sit down. It's okay, you know. Right. Well, unfortunately, we, 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 we need to wind it down, guys. I'm sorry, we have, do have a couple of questions I would want to address, um, but, but we, we have an hour. We went just a little bit over. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. Greg, are you feeling better? You and you doing good? This is this is a lot of fun. I love that. it. Is it's a it's a lot of fun, and I I really I really mean this when I say I respect and absolutely adore both of you. I really do. We've known each other a long time, Greg. We've known now for what two years, something like that, and you have been an absolute powerhouse in here. And I love serving Where with the two of you. It's been a joy. Thank you again for coming up here you guys thank you for for being here tonight i hope that you got out of stuff i know i got stuff out of it this has been tremendous those of you tuning in thank you for tuning in i want to encourage you 
Um, everything that we have talked about has been founded in this right here. This book is more than just a book. It is the heart of God. It is the word. It is the inerrant, flawless, timeless word of God and it is relevant to your life and mine. And it is the guidebook for, for parenting, for being a husband, for being a wife, for being a grandparent, a good employee, you name it. When you found your life on this, the principles and the relationship with Christ, you cannot go wrong. It isn't just a matter of getting a ticket to heaven. It is getting the full life that God has for you right here, the good and the bad and growing into the identity of Christ. And so I want you to know that if you do not have a relationship with Christ, that we would love to introduce you to him. He is foundational in everything we do here. He is foundational. And so um, when this message, when this uh, live <coughs> feed is all done, I want to encourage you to reach out to us through Messenger, through Facebook, come in here live, and we would love to pray with you and introduce Jesus to you. Um, and if you live locally and you do not have a home church, we would love to see you here. Uh, we are right here at the 530 Center here in Marysville, California. And I do not want you to go he come here if you have a home church. If you have a home church, get plugged in. Praise God. But if you do not and you live locally, we would love to see you. So let's pray and then we will be dismissed. Lord, thank you so much for your goodness and your kindness, for your faithfulness, Lord. <coughs> I pray that your w words would take root in our hearts and that through this session right here that we would grow more like you that we would have better marriages better relationships with our children better relationships with our parents with our co-workers that we begin to show levels of honor that were not there before because you have spoken to us through your holy spirit we thank you so much that you are here we pray that you've been glorified today in your name we pray Amen. Thank you guys again for coming, and uh, we'll see you again next month, the first Wednesday. I'll have a whole new panel. I'm really excited for it. You guys have a blessed time. Take care. Bye now.